Welcome to another edition of the Value Town Fun Show. This week I cover Tesla, a very difficult company to value. Even all the analysts can't agree on what it should be worth. It's one of the most split opinion stocks out there. As usual, we'll start off the show by buying a little bit of the Vanguard Total Stock Index Fund and the Vanguard Total International Stock Index Fund. Don't worry. Those GameStop positions closed August 21st. This particular portion was recorded August 21st. Anyways, I purchased 0.1 of the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index and uh, Vanguard Total International Stock Index, yay fractional shares. And I'm going to sell the Jeff stocks that I got thanks to you guys signing up for Webull and depositing $100 using the link below. You get stocks, I get stocks. Uh, this helps fund the show as well as by signing up for my Patreon. Thank you for doing so. Uh, we trade using those funds. So those trades were done on Friday. However, uh, today, uh, when I'm recording this, August 24th, because of the GameStop development, I, I just wanted to point out how narrowly I missed GameStop going to the moon. Uh, so I opened the bear call position on the 11th, betting that GameStop would not rise over $200 in one week and a half. And fortunately, it didn't because August 20th, uh, when the markets closed on Friday, uh, GameStop was $159-ish. However, I may have underestimated GameStop's ability to just randomly shoot up. Tuesday, after I closed my position, because it expired, uh, went up 27.53% in one day. Uh, the news reported this as going up for no particular reason. Um, some of the GameStop... Theorists say that this is because there's a greater margin requirement for swaps. That's a big deal for GameStop. Congratulations, GameStop bulls, and hooray me for somehow just missing uh, this crushing my position. Uh, if this had happened a few days earlier, instead of gaining $14, the Valley Town Fund would have lost $486 thus showing how volatile short-term options are and not to underestimate the possibility of the stock going to the moon. Now, looking at Tesla, we start at Finbox, my favorite site to look up data. Tesla is in the automobiles business, although a lot of people will argue it's not your traditional automobile company. This was done December 22nd, 2020, so the data is a little bit outdated. But you can't value Tesla as just an automobile company. Tesla's market value, $615 billion, outvalued all other major automobile makers. Toyota, Volkswagen, Damier, GM, BMW, Honda, Ford added together its market cap was higher than all of those. Here's Tesla's company profile, but I believe it's not actually that uh, useful. I'll sum it up. Uh, Tesla sells electric vehicles. And furthermore, on top of that, its electric vehicles have self-driving technology attached to them. It also has an energy generation segment. Now, Tesla has had a truly meteoric rise December 28th, 2019, all the way until January 2nd, 2021. During that period of time, Tesla saw an incredible growth in stock value of 719%. If you had went all in on Tesla in the year of 2020, you would have 7 extra money in just one year. Wow. Now, during this run-up... Sure, some of it was due to overenthusiasm. Tesla did a stock split, which has been accounted for. Tesla got accepted in the S&P. But some of it is because Tesla was perhaps genuinely undervalued. And then that value was realized. And Tesla actually made a lot of 
serious developments. Now, don't get FOMO. After it rose up even further, there was a correction to the value of the price because perhaps the price was too high at that time. Perhaps the price is still too high. We'll see. Now, 2020 was a big year for Tesla. It grew from an unprofitable company to turning its first profit. Yay, Tesla. Looking at the quick financials of Tesla, Tesla has had a very high growth rate in revenue. Uh, Tesla is uh, a super growth company currently. Not making that much profit yet, but making a profit. Operating income grew uh, from being negative to turning a profit, and net income is, during 2020, profitable. One particular thing that I will point out uh, for Tesla is that they have diluted people because uh, in order to keep up that revenue growth, they had to issue a bunch of shares. And when Tesla issues shares, you have a smaller portion of Tesla, but you would arguably be happy about that because thus far Tesla seems to have used that money to very critical revenue growing machines, gigafactories. Looking at the balance sheet, uh, Tesla has 26 mil in current assets compared to 14 mil in current liabilities, 52 total assets, 28 mil total liabilities, so they're looking in a fine spot financially. Their cash flow is growing, and I would anticipate if you saw a few more years of this, uh, you would see that cash flow trending up at a very high rate. As a very high growth rate company, the price to earnings ratio is obviously rather high. Currently, well, as of last year, 1255x, 1,255 times. But it has been descending rapidly if we look at the latest 12 month uh, numbers. The uh, PE ratio is sliding from 1255 to 929 to 326, representing that they have been catching up to a more fair price to earnings ratio because their earnings have significantly increased over even as short a period as the last two quarters. So the first thing I like to look at for all companies is to immediately look into their annual report and the quarterly report. But I will say that before even looking into that, I know for a fact that there is no way that I'm going to properly be able to value a car tech company that Tesla is. Uh, there's so many things going for it, as Tesla points out. Uh, all of this is fully vertically integrated. They produce solar, they store the energy in the batteries. Uh, there's Tesla cells, there's te Tesla vehicles. The energy storage that they have uh, is associated with a way to sell and buy energy. Uh, the Tesla vehicles that they have are attached to a full uh, driving technology. All of those segments are all growing at different rates, and it's very, very difficult to forecast what those rates are going to look like in the future. I am not even a car guy. This is clearly outside of my circle of competence. So for this valuation, we're going to focus on a strategy I like doing called Trust the Analysts. Uh, more on that in a bit. Looking at the latest quarterly report, uh, you can see just how hard it is going to be to value Tesla. They're currently ramping up their production. Uh, they've got this Berlin factory in Germany under construction. There's uh, some delays in getting that up because of regulatory reasons. Uh, in Texas, they're building another gigafactory. Uh, also, they're going to produce Cybertrucks at some point. And you can see each of these factories, They, when they're at full scale, they might be able to produce 500,000 cars. And one of the things to look at in Tesla in general, and you can get this from skimming their report through looking at the earnings call and just through basic research, is that every single Tesla car that Tesla makes right now just gets sold extremely fast. There's a back order for that and it's continued to be expected to be a back order. In fact, that goes for all cars right now. 
And currently, it's a little bit difficult to produce these cars because there's a semiconductor shortage, by the way. But Tesla is getting through that, and there's evidence pointing towards the semiconductor shortage easing up. Uh, certainly, this is something that is going to be weighing on Tesla, though. Recently, Tesla hosted an AI day in which they mainly focused on the self-driving technology behind a Tesla. And it was far more complicated than I had thought, actually. And, you know, I respected the self-driving technology, but I never really quite understood what was all behind it. It's very, very hard to get a car to drive itself, as it turns out. And they managed to convince me into the story that the Tesla is basically a robot, a very specialized robot that's a car. Uh, so I started to believe, okay, Tesla is not a car company. It's a robot company. Interestingly enough, they also showcased a Tesla bot during that AI event. It turns out that the technology that runs a car and the self-driving um, capabilities of a Tesla car, they can just be perhaps almost directly associated with a robot. This isn't going to be something that's coming up soon, but eliminates dangerous, repetitive, boring tasks. Uh, is Tesla going to be the leader in building robots? Probably not. But are they going to be a competitor? Maybe I could see it. I could see, like, perhaps with all the technology that's involved in a self-driving car uh, that they might have an advantage when it comes to building a robot. Some bad news. Uh, Tesla sales cratered in China, but investors don't seem to mind. Uh, this was August 10th following their earnings report. Tesla built a giant factory in China uh, in order to, you know, ideally sell the cars they made in China to the Chinese. However, China has its own electric car manufacturers, and it seems like the people of China are inclined to purchase the Chinese EV company cars. Anyways, I suppose the silver lining is that Tesla is able to ship these cars to be sold. Uh, although, you know, it's a little bit more annoying than just building them in China and selling them in China. They're mostly being built in China and then being sold in Europe. Uh, recently, August 5th, 2021, uh, Biden held a speech where American leadership was to be had for clean cars and trucks, in which Biden invited Ford and General Motors and, surprisingly not Tesla, to this uh, event. Maybe they didn't invite Tesla because, you know, Tesla was already 100% electric vehicles. Uh, but Elon Musk definitely had a salty tweet to make about that. <laughs> Biden would like to set a target, a 50% electric vehicle sales by 2030. And needless to say, this is very good for Tesla, who builds 100% electric vehicles. In fact, one could say that such an ambitious program was only created because Tesla exists, because Tesla started as a company. I don't think most of us back in 2015, 2010, would have predicted that 2030 we'd get 50% electric vehicles. So props to Tesla. How hard could it be to build electric cars anyways? Well, it turns out it's pretty tough. This article from July 23rd, GM recalls all-electric Chevy Bolt for second time due to fire risk. Here comes GM with a very, very expensive recall, uh, which has caused their stock price to plummet as of the last month. Turns out that sometimes, due to the batteries, the electric cars are liable to be set on fire. Uh, Tesla has a little bit more experience in building these cars. GM, you're recommended to park your Chevy Bolt outside after charging. That's not a good look for GM. Now, in terms of how hard is it to build a self-driving car, it turns out it's extremely hard. If you watch the AI day, you could really appreciate just how far ahead Tesla might be. Uh, but there's some basic information here. This is updated July 3rd. In order to get a good self-driving car, you need a lot of data. And Tesla has 3 billion self-driving miles logged. 
That's compared to Waymo, uh, which has 20 million miles, and GM's Cruise, 1.4 million miles in California. By all accounts, they're almost certainly going to be the first ones to build a fully self-driving vehicle. In fact, their vehicles are already self-driving. You just can't call it a self-autonomous driving vehicle yet because you do need to be there uh, guiding the wheel just in case. But already, number of vehicular accidents per million miles driven with just the autopilot, it's uh, you know 0. 0.2, 0. 0.3. Uh, US average, it's two. It's already significantly safer and it's only getting safer. Probably the big exciting event for Tesla is someday, and Elon Musk uh, often has very ambitious timeline predictions, someday there will be a Tesla $25,000 electric car. But so far, Tesla has always fulfilled their promises. You know, someday that will happen. And when that day happens, Tesla will make a ludicrously large amount of money. The plan is there, it makes sense. This is probably the big payoff uh, for this car tech company. You know, mass produced, affordable car uh, that has the tech that's fully autonomous. And we're not even gonna talk about the idea that there could be the self-driving taxi someday, maybe the robots take off. Really hard to value all this stuff. So, why don't I just rely on the analysts uh, the analysts have a prediction overall that Tesla next year will be worth $697.90. That's compared to today's price, uh, August 24th of $708, a little bit overvalued. It turns out that as exciting as the company is, as much as it promises to do, you can pay too much. So Finvox does have a cool way to just model this and their models are based off of the average of the analysts uh, now for this year next year and two years from now there's quite a number of analysts predicting this and this does include both the bulls and the bears uh, because you can see that there's a very big split opinion on Tesla, 12 with a buy rating, 7 with a hold rating, 6 with a sell rating. You got this joker over here who thinks Tesla is only worth $300. You also have this mega bull who thinks Tesla is worth $1,200. You have this uh, JP Morgan analyst who thinks that's $180. And on the other hand, you have this guy from Goldman Sachs who thinks Tesla is worth $875. Huge split opinion. So for this one, I am going to just take the numbers at face value. This model, by the way, it does account for the bears and the bulls put together. Fair value, $673. Not that far off of $708. Uh, currently, 5% overvalued. Now, I'm going to make one small adjustment, actually, because I may disagree with the discount rate. I subscribe to the CAPM valuation methodology. Capital asset pricing model. Your expected return is equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta of the company times the investor equity risk premium, which is to say, how much more does an investor want in terms of a return when compared to a risk-free rate? So if you use a beta of one, uh, and you use an expected risk premium of 4.31%. This is using Aswath Demodorin's uh, equity risk premium number. Uh, you adjust for the fact that there's risk additional uh, for being a worldwide global company. Uh, I come up with 4.81%. This is the number that I use for my equity risk premium for most companies that are worldwide. And I'm using the risk-free rate as 1.91%. You might say, hey, the 1.29% number is more appropriate. That's a 10-year rate. Uh, why am I using a 30-year rate? Well, the numbers right now are so low for the risk-free rate that I'm just using the 30-year rate. Uh, because I'm using a higher rate, that means I'm demanding a higher rate. My general demand for uh, the S&P 500 right now, one could argue this is kind of low. 
I'm expecting the S&P 500 to return 6.72%. I'm very happy if I put my mind into a low-cost index fund and it returns 6.72% right now. That is because interest rates are at such a low amount. Bond yield rates are at such a low amount. Uh, obviously, if bond rates are that low, you shouldn't expect the stock market to return that higher rate. Anyways, one of the important things is the beta Stocks all have different betas. This generally means how much they change based off of how much the US stock market changes. Tesla's is uniquely extremely high. As you might have been able to tell from the meteoric rise back in 2020, uh, but both in terms of one year, two year, and five year beta, I believe it's fair to use a beta of two for Tesla. Uh, that does push the discount rate to be very high, 11.53%. That means if I'm invested in Tesla due to how volatile it is, and you know it's very hard to calculate how well Tesla is going to do, it tends to produce twice the amount of returns of the stock market overall when the stock market goes up. It tends to drop about two times more than the stock market when the stock market goes down. Uh, that means that I'm expecting a return of 11.5% on Tesla. If I use that number instead of this current discount rate, and you can see that, of course, Tesla's fair value is going to go down. Uh, I would value Tesla, you know, assuming all the numbers that the analysts were correct on, I'd value Tesla at $583 uh, when Tesla is actually $708 right now. Now, how do you calculate this fair value? First of all, theoretically, the way to value a company is by adding up every single cash flow that they're going to get in the future and discount them back to the present day. Well, in order to even get a cash flow, first you look at revenue. I'm just trusting the analysts here. Uh, revenue, this is how much they're expected to grow. This is the earnings before interest. Uh, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. This is how much it is expected to grow. This is their capital expenditures. That's basically how much they're spending on their gigafactories and all that stuff. This is the amount of revenue that's associated with that. Through all this, and this is, you know, thank you Finbox for calculating all this for me, uh, you eventually get to cash flow. The basics of it are you have this EBITDA number, you take out the capital expenditures, uh, you add back in depreciation and amortization. There's some stuff in the middle involving taxes. Uh, you get free cash flow. And through adding the expected free cash flow of every single cash flow forever, and I did the five year, by the way, there's a reason for that. If you were to do this forever, and you were to discount this back at the rate that I had set. I uh, note that I set a rate uh, for this particular company uh, because of the high risk involved, 11.5%. Uh, if you discount all of those cash flows back at 11.5%, then you can see that um, 2021, you would add 6 billion roughly, 8 billion, 8.8 .8 billion, 8.3 billion, 8.8 .8 billion. I get the present value of the cash flows of all the future. It comes out to, well, not, sorry, not of all the future, of the five years, it comes out to $39 billion. This model assumes you sell the entire company after five years. And this is where you come into an incredibly variable calculation which you possibly you can't possibly actually estimate this comes down to market sentiment what is the multiple that you multiply the earnings before interest taxes depreciation and amortization by you take a guess at it through surrounding companies and through the company's history well in 2016 that multiple was 335. In 2017, it was 20, 289. 18, it was 112. 19, that was a bad year for Tesla. It went down to 40. And then climbed back up to 167, fell to 121. 
uh, you compare it to like companies. Is this a car company? In which case you say, well, Tesla is a car company. I'm going to use a multiple of eight or perhaps 16. Or maybe you say Tesla is a tech company. I'm going to think of it as like Amazon. I actually believe that based on the rapid growth of Amazon and through its technology, Tesla is kind of similar to Amazon. Amazon did have some very high multiples way back then. Uh, I think it is reasonable. And boy, can you throw a lot of different numbers around on what this evident multiple should be. I've just used the default number here, 38.1 times. But boy, does this uh, matter a lot because this comes out with the terminal value and the terminal value is worth a lot of the company because you've got your five years of uh, discounted cash flows and that uh, values uh, 39 billion dollars worth of tesla value but the present value of the company when you sell it in five years and you multiply by just the ebitda by 38x in order to figure out a fair sale value uh, that's worth $534 billion. Uh, that's clearly where the majority of the money's worth. So in essence, Tesla is basically what everyone thinks it's worth in five years. Enterprise value of $573 billion. Uh, what's important is, why is it 38 times? How will it be 38 times? I believe it's fair to say uh, this follows something like Amazon's valuation. If Tesla does everything that it sets out to do, ramp up that car production, uh, improve its self-driving technology, come up with very inexpensive car batteries and mass produce this uh, $25,000 car. If it manages to perhaps look into uh, the self-driving technology, which um, you know expands on it, they do have a head start on it. Maybe they get into robotics. You think of all of that and i would say this is a rosy view i think this current stock price i would say is priced for perfection you know it's priced as if you expect tesla to do that well this fair value uh, is based off of the analyst numbers uh, where you have some bears and you have some bulls in there and furthermore you discount it at a rate of 11.53 to be fair, uh, in a bit, Tesla's beta is going to go down because it can't be that volatile forever. Maybe it goes down to 1.5, in which case, if you are willing to take a lower discount rate uh, than the fair value of Tesla, $640. Now, if you just keep plugging away at that discount rate, let's say, you know, I'm willing to not accept 9%. I'm willing to take more of the bull case. You know, let's just say, you take the market value of the S&P, $693. You know, it's a really, really slim margin. Boy, would I not invest my personal money into this. The S&P expected return is 6.72%. And if you are willing to take discount rate that's equal to the S&P 500, which you shouldn't for a stock like Tesla, then the fair value is about right. Possibility number one, uh, people aren't valuing the risk associated with Tesla enough. People are paying too much for the risk. Sure, maybe the stock is expected to go up, but they aren't uh, requiring enough out of Tesla. They're valuing it as if Tesla had a beta of one. Or possibility number two, uh, they have a rosier view than the analysts. They expect growth rate to go up. By the way, I'm going to mention something. Uh, this growth rate, uh, Tesla has projected a 50% growth rate, uh, however, in terms of sales of cars. However, this projection, it assumes that shares outstanding will remain the same. When you do issue more shares and you use those shares wisely to grow out the company, it's possible that your revenue will grow much faster. They're going to be used in order to grow out more gigafactories. That's going to uh, cause growth to go very, very fast. Here's something fun and perhaps a reason on why just buying the stock market ETF is good enough. 
When you buy the total stock market ETF, 1.18% of your money is invested in Tesla. Because Tesla is a pretty big company. That may make you happy, that may make you sad. Uh, but one way or the other, when you buy the stock market ETF, you're getting some Tesla with it. The Valley Town Fund is already, therefore, directly, indirectly invested into Tesla. So when I buy more Tesla, it means I'm going to overweight myself on Tesla because I believe that it will outperform the S&P 500. In reality, you know, I do feel personally that's a little bit overvalued, but I'm actually not as big a bear as a lot of people. And I'm willing to commit initially 1% of the Value Town Fund to overweight myself into Tesla. The closest I can get to 1%, given my portfolio value of $2,400, uh, would be using the fractional shares ability of Webull uh, to buy 0 0.03 shares of Tesla, currently trading at a high of 700, a high price of 700. So there you have it. $21 of the Value Town Fund is committed to Tesla. Oh, and note that this trade was done uh, late Monday. I actually got that order in right before the market closed. So while I'm excited to be a partial owner of Tesla now, it is telling that I have only decided to contribute 1% of my portfolio towards Tesla. And I probably wouldn't do 1% of a real-sized portfolio. That's uh, $20 thrown into Tesla on a whim and a dream. This is definitely not a position I take in a normal portfolio. Uh, the calculations I made off of dissenting analyst positions in a area, in a field that's very complicated outside of my circle of competence. I'm definitely not a car guy. Definitely going to be a very high variance stock. That's about all I know. There's no margin of safety to be had because I'm already paying a little bit over uh, the fair market value price. But you know what? I'll put it in there a tiny bit for entertainment purposes and to chase a dream. Thank you, as always, for supporting the show by subscribing on Patreon if you want to support the show and also find out about what I personally hold in my portfolio. Hoping we uh, get a good stock soon, which I want to put a substantial amount of the Valley Town Fund into because this cash on hand is burning a hole in my pocket.